So, you want to play Mind Knight, do you? Well, if you're a fan of The Resistance, or Avalon, or just like lying and deceiving your friends, then this may be right up your alley, especially if you like free Steam games. The most basic and familiar form of the game involves five players, three agents and two hackers. There are five separate nodes to capture during a game of Mind Knight. The game is over when the agents capture three of the nodes or the hackers hack three, whichever comes first. For the agents to successfully capture a node, every participant in the node team needs to secure the node. However, for the hackers to successfully hack the mission, only one participant is needed to hack the node. As is normal for these types of games, agents only know their own roles, whilst the hackers know who their friends are, and consequently, everyone on the other team as well. Center stage in the middle of the screen are the players arrayed in all their glory. All of the actions you perform in-game happen in the middle of the circle formed by you and your adversaries. In the top left of the screen is your character's name, role, and if you're a hacker, any allies you have as well. In the top middle of the screen is once again your role, your mission, the round timer, and the name of the next player to be captain. On the far right of the screen is the node tracker. Hovering over each node will tell you how many players are needed to attempt to secure the node and, for larger games, how many hacks are needed to stop the securing. Each time a team captures a node, it changes color to match, letting you see how close you are to failure. The capturing of each node is split into three rounds, the talking phase, proposal phase, and mission phase. During the talking phase, the team can analyze what went right or wrong with the previous node, who's looking extra guilty, and who can be trusted above all else. The proposal phase begins with the current captain either passing the captain ship to the next in line or selecting a given number of players to form the node team. At that point, the decision goes to a vote, with every player deciding whether the node team furthers their goals. If the majority of players choose accept, then the node team is a go. However, if the majority reject the node team, then the role of captain is again passed to the next in line. This continues until a node team has been agreed on, or five node teams have been rejected in one round, in which case, the hackers automatically win. Once a node team has been accepted by the players, the mission phase begins. Those on the node team are given a secret prompt on whether to secure the node or hack it. The agents only have the ability to secure the node, whilst the hackers can choose to secure the node to deceive their enemy and try and claim innocence, or to hack the node and bring themselves one step closer to victory. Once a node has been claimed by either team, then the talking phase begins once more. Whilst the premise of the game is simple, the real action comes in the talking, the detective work, and the filthy, filthy lies. Unlike some of the more modern social deception games, there is no break in communication. You are able to try and convince, weasel, deny and deceive throughout the game. The best plays come from promises made and alliances broken, but always logic is key. For those who really want to dive into the details, you can view the chat history showing who voted for what, as well as the vote history to see how each node team was formed. And that's it! Somehow, your team has come out on top! Well done for not letting me down! However, before you dive back in, each time you play, you earn coins based on your performance and whether or not you've gained any achievements. You can use these coins to unlock new characters, either well-known or questionable, as well as emotes, emojis, and gestures to enhance your gameplay. Now you're suitably equipped, you can try adding more friends to the party or different game modes. Forming a party of more than five keeps the core gameplay the same, but modifies how many agents and hackers there are 
how many form each node team, and even how many hacks are necessary to prevent the agents from securing a node. Alongside the default game mode is the Blind Hackers and Mainframe modes. In Blind Hackers, as the title suggests, the hackers start the game not knowing who their allies are, leveling the playing field. However, the rest of the mechanics are left untouched. In Mainframe, certain roles are added to each team. For one of the agents, they get given the admin role. This lets them know exactly who all the hackers are. Their job is to secretly influence and guide their team to victory without letting the hackers know their power. For the hackers, one of their team gets the nuka role. If the agents secure three nodes first, the nuka can change the outcome of the game by working out who the admin was and targeting them for removal. This enables the hackers to come back and steal victory. For those games with seven or eight players, another role is included for the hackers, called the scripty. The player with this role is not given the knowledge of who their allies are and are left blind and in the dark. These are the basics of Mind Knights. The depth of the game's meta-detective work will leave you scratching your head for hours. Assumptions will be made, laughter will be had, and in the end, everyone always thinks I'm suspicious. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another book. Tutorial. Hack.